A factor important to the understanding of stocks is learning how they are described. Some of the terms analyzed in this lecture will be market capitalization, industries and sectors, and cyclical and secular companies. Let's start off with market capitalization. You'll often hear companies referred to as large cap, mid cap, or small cap. All these terms refer to the overall market capitalization of a company. It is basically a measure of a company's size. In other words, it can be described as the dollar value of the company and is calculated by multiplying the number of shares outstanding by the current market price. The shares outstanding of a company can be found on any financial website, such as Yahoo or Google Finance, and is just meant to represent the company's stock held by all of its shareholders. There's no specific point in order to qualify a company as being a large cap, mid, or small cap but usually you'll see a small cap company being valued at less than $1 billion, a mid cap company between one and five billion, and large cap over five billion. Let's just look at a quick example in order to illustrate the concept. I'll use Apple stock as the example. Say Apple has a stock price of $500 per share and has 900 million shares outstanding. If you were to multiply both figures, you would find out that its market capitalization stands at $450 billion, earning it a spot as a large cap company. Larger cap companies will tend to be much less vulnerable to the ups and downs of the economy, in large part due to their huge financial reserves. On the other hand, small cap companies are much more vulnerable to turmoils, but can provide for a lot more growth versus large caps. Companies are always divided into sectors and industries. A sector represents a large part of the economy. These can be sectors from financial to technology companies. Industries, on the other hand, are much more specific and are part of a sector. For example, banks are an industry within the financial sector. The existence of sectors and industries are important to know as they frequently all move together in terms of stock price. An event in the economy can affect an entire industry. For example, if there were higher gas prices, the profits of transportation companies would fall, thus causing the company's stock price to plummet. Or if an industry was in the midst of innovation and was the center of attention. Much like during the dot-com bubble, which was a time when investors bought up any tech companies they could find, even though their stock price was worthless. This resulted in the crash of 2000. An important part of maintaining a healthy por portfolio, which means a collection of stocks, is by having stocks that belong to different sectors and industries. It is important as if, say, a stock of one industry were to fall, you would have the downside protection of the other stocks, which would belong to different industries and sectors. Stocks are also divided into two very important categories the seculars and the cyclicals. The big difference is in the way that they make their profits, therefore responding to the relative strength or weakness of the economy. Secular stocks make up stocks that people need, regardless of the state of the economy. So for example, consumer staples, which are basically supermarkets, etc., or healthcare. So basically services that people will always use even during a weak economy. The opposite to these are cyclicals, sectors and companies that require a strong economy to thrive. Industries such as travel or luxury goods are some of them. During times of economic hardship, they tend to have decreased profits as people try to cut down on unnecessary expenses. The three major descriptions of stock discussed in this lecture were market capitalization, which is the company's total value, sectors and industries, which are categories in which companies are placed in relation to what they do, and seculars and cyclicals, which uh, is related to the two different types of companies and how they make their profits. So this concludes this lecture on how stocks are described. Thank you very much.